Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a bomb with a timer on top. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so as you can see, we have a bomb with a timer on top. Once it hits zero, it blows up. And then we also have this part here where you can step on it to bring more bombs into the game. And just like before, once the bombs hit zero, they blow up. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and start by making the bomb. You're welcome to make this look however you want to. To make the one I have here, what you're gonna do is go over to the parts section and insert a sphere. Go ahead and resize it and change it to whatever color you want to. Okay, after that, we're going to insert a cylinder. After that, there's a couple things we're gonna to do to the cylinder. The first thing we're gonna do is rotate it. And then we're gonna resize it a bit. So I'm going to bring this part down and then we're gonna make it a little bit wider. Okay, and then we're going to move this part on top of the sphere. And then you just wanna to try to center it on the top of the ball. Okay, and for the last part, we're gonna get one more cylinder. This one, I'm gonna change the color to white. We're going to shrink this down a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to rotate it at an angle. So something like that would be fine. Okay, and there we go. So now that we have all the parts in the right spot, I'm going to select them all, and then go under the Model tab and press Union. And what that does, it groups all the parts into one union part. I'm gonna come over to the Explorer menu and then rename this to Main. After that, I'm going to insert a model into the workspace. I'm gonna rename this model to bomb. And then I'm gonna take that union part that I just created and put it inside the model. All right, and the reason I'm putting it inside of a model is so that you can add other parts if you want to. Okay, so after you have the main part inside of the model, we're gonna be adding a billboard GUI. And then inside of the billboard GUI, we're going to be adding a text label. Go ahead and rename your text label to timer. Next, we're gonna change some options for the Buildboard GUI. The first thing we're gonna do is select Always on top. And then to make it appear above the bomb, we're gonna to go to this section right here, and we're going to adjust the second number. So let's start off by trying the number two. Okay, so that looks a little bit too high, so let's try one. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I wanted it a little bit higher. So let's try 1.5. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Now for the timer, we're also gonna make a few changes. Under the text section, we're gonna start by changing the text. So what you're gonna put here is however long you wanna make the timer. So if you want it to be 10 seconds, then you would put the number 10 there. You can also change the font and the font size if you want to. Okay, after that, I'm going to change the text color. So I'm gonna choose the color white. And then for the text stroke transparency, I'm gonna change that to 0 0.5. And the last thing we're gonna do is make the background transparent, so that's gonna be near the top. And then for background transparency, we're gonna change that to one. You're also welcome to make this look however you want to. After you have the build board GUI set, we're going to add a script into the main part. On this script, we're gonna start by saying local bomb, and this is gonna be equal to script dot parent, then we're gonna make a reference for the timer. So we'll say local timer, and this is gonna be equal to bomb dot billboard GUI. And then inside the billboard GUI, we have a text label called timer. Next, we're going to set a variable for the time amount. So we'll say local time amount. And this is gonna be equal to however long you want the bomb to last. So our bomb is gonna last 10 seconds. We're also going to make a variable for the blast range. So we'll say local blast range. And we're gonna set that equal to 15. So the blast range is gonna be how far away from the bomb that parts get affected. So if we put it at 15, then in a 15 stud radius around the bomb, parts will get affected. If you wanna increase that, then choose a larger number. If you want a smaller blast zone, then choose a smaller number. Okay, next we're going to say timer.text. 
and this is going to be equal to time amount. So this way later on, if you want to change the time amount, you don't have to go back into the text label. You can just change it right here, and then this line will set it on the text label. Next, we're going to make a while loop to count down for the timer. So we're going to say while time amount is greater than zero. What we're going to do is we're going to wait one second. After we wait one second, then we're going to subtract one from the time amount. So we're going to say time amount. And then we're going to say minus equals one. So this will subtract one from it. And then we want to set the text label equal to the new time amount. So we're going to say timer dot text is going to be equal to time amount. Okay, so once that's over, we want to cause the explosion. To do that, we're going to say local explosion. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside here, we're going to be creating an explosion. We're going to set the explosion's parent. So we're going to say explosion dot parent is going to be equal to game dot workspace. The position of the explosion is going to happen at the bomb. So we'll say explosion dot position is going to be equal to bomb dot position. Then we're going to set the blast radius. So we'll say explosion dot blast radius is going to be equal to our variable. And then finally, after the explosion occurs, we're going to get rid of the bomb by saying bomb dot parent colon and destroy. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code now and make sure this part's working. Okay, so we have our bombs right here, and they're counting down from 10. Once they hit zero, then they explode, and they get removed from the game. All right, so that part looks like it's working. So the next thing we're going to do is make it so that when the player steps on this part here, a new bomb appears in the game. To do that, you're going to get a part that the player is going to step on. You can go ahead and rename that part to trigger. And then inside the part, you're going to be adding a script. Okay, we're going to start off the script by saying local trigger. And this is going to be equal to script dot parent. And what we're going to be doing is every time the player touches this part, we're going to make a copy of this bomb that we're going to put inside of server storage. So to get this inside of server storage, just go ahead and right click, press copy, and then right click on server storage and press paste into. Okay, so after you have that model inside the server storage, what we can do is make a copy of it. We're going to start by saying local storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put server storage. After that, we're going to make a variable called can activate. So we'll say local can activate. And this is going to be set equal to true at the beginning. So this is how we're going to add a cooldown time to it so that every time the player touches this part, they're going to have to wait maybe three seconds before they can spawn in a new bomb. Okay, finally, we're going to make a spawn range. So we'll say local spawn range. And we're going to set this equal to 50. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to spawn the bombs within a 50 stud radius of the part. So now that we have all the variables taken care of, we're going to make a function next. So we'll say local function. The name of the function can be something like make underscore bomb. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Now inside this function, we're going to make sure a player touches this part. So we'll say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part. So this is the other object that touches our trigger part. And then we're going to say dot parent to get the player model. And then within the model, we're going to look for a humanoid part. So we're going to say find first child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. Okay, next we're going to say if humanoid. So if it was able to find the humanoid part and can activate is equal to true. And I realize I put an extra can here. So it should be that. So and can activate. So if those two are true, then what we're going to do is first we're going to set can activate equal to false. Then we're going to make a copy of the bomb. So we'll say local bomb. And this is going to be equal to storage. Since it's in server storage, we're going to say colon find first child. We're looking for the model called bomb. And then once we find it, we're going to make a copy of it by saying clone. After that, we want to set the position of the bomb. So we'll say local x is going to be equal to math dot random. Inside the parentheses, we're going to start by saying trigger 
dot position dot x and then to make it where it can spawn 50 studs above and also behind the trigger part what we're going to do is say minus and then spawn range and then we're going to do the same thing but instead of subtracting we're going to add so i'm just going to copy this we'll do a comma and then paste it and then on this side instead of minus we're going to add and then we're going to do the same thing for a z variable so we'll change that part to z and then for each of the x's we'll change it to a capital z Okay, and we don't need to do this for the Y part because the Y part controls the height of the part. So we just want to make sure it can go 50 to the left, right, up, and down. Okay, after that, we're going to set the parent and also the position of the bomb. We'll start with the parent by saying bomb.parent. And this is going to be equal to game.workspace. Next, we're going to say bomb.main. So this is the main part inside of the bomb. And then we're going to say dot position. And we're going to set this equal to a vector 3 dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put x, which is this variable right here. For the y part, we're going to set that equal to 3. And then for the z part, we're going to set it equal to whatever random number got chosen for z. Okay, after that, we're going to wait for 3 seconds. So this will be our cooldown time. And then after that 3 seconds, we're going to say can activate is equal to true. Okay, and finally, we want to connect this function to a touch event. So we're going to say trigger dot touch colon connect. And then we're going to connect this to our function, which is make underscore bomb. All right, so let's go ahead and run the game and make sure this part's working. Okay, and it looks like when I touch this part, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and check out the output. And this red line right here is the error. So if we click on it, it shows us what line the error occurs on. And we can see right here for position, I misspelled it. And I should have an I right here. All right, so let's go and rerun the game and see if this fixes it. Okay, so now if I touch this part here, there's the new bomb there, and I'll wait three seconds. And there we have another one. And I can do this every three seconds, so every time the three seconds is up, I can spawn a new one into the game. All right, so it looks like everything is working, and I imagine there's probably a lot of variations and maybe changes that you guys want to see. So if there's some different version of this that you want to see, just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get to it. For now, though, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.